Okay, thank you for joining the Average Golfer for some more product testing. I'm down here at 4 Golf Chester. I've just reviewed one of the first Frickson products and I'm about to get stuck into number two. But just to mention the Z585, first video I did, probably the slightly bigger version uh, of this, which is what I'm doing now, which is the Z785. Now again, forged iron, a little bit more compact than the 585 that I've just mentioned. Um, we're going to get down here, hit some golf balls and find out what this slimmer, smaller, more compact version of the 585 does. Let's find out. Right, so first things first, let's talk about the shaft again that I've put into this. It's exactly the same shaft that I've just put into the, uh, tested with the uh, 585. It's the NS Pro Modus. It's a stiff shaft. It's 105. Uh, it's a shaft that I'm really familiar with, really comfortable with, uh, so more than happy to be testing this iron out with this shaft. Right, let's throw up some images and talk about, first of all, what tweaks they've made to this from the set that, as I referred to, they released a couple of years ago. So here's some information from Strix. So the continuation still of this uh, Tor VT Soul, as they call it, newly designed, so slightly changes in the, it's the bounce really, the sort of, there's almost a V-shaped pattern on the bottom of the sole, uh, which they claim that interacts better with sort of turf interaction, like I've said on previous videos, very hard to measure. Uh, Tor cavity, extra mass you can see there, where highlighted in red, behind the impact location, Allows for powerful shot shaping with increased versatility. Interesting one. Forge construction, as I've just mentioned. And in all honesty, uh, Strixon don't say a great deal more than that. So they've kept it as I like it, nice and simple. That's, it's all about the performance of this club. Next thing I want to talk about before I hit golf balls is how it looks at a dress. And perhaps more importantly, how it differs from the 585 and why you might be persuaded to use one and not the other. And the first thing with the image that I've thrown up uh, now is the top line. Always when you come to the player's iron, always when you come to the more compact iron, the first thing that you notice is notable is the thinner top line. And yes, it is going to be something that will appeal to some, but not to all, because it is less confidence inspiring, I suppose you would call it, in terms of the size and, and thickness of that top line. But I actually love it. Uh, I love how compact it is. I love how it sits behind the ball. But like I said, it's probably not for everybody. And I don't think there's a great deal more to say. Like I say, you draw your own opinions in terms of how you think it looks, uh, in terms of the club profile itself and appearance. It's very much a bit of high chrome, matte chrome finish, very simplistic in its design, and it appeals to me very much. The sole unit, again, is a little bit thinner than what you notice on the, um, on the 585. Right, enough of that. Anyway, let's hit some golf balls. Like in the previous review, I don't want to get too bogged down in terms of... Um, let me just make sure my microphone's okay there. Like I said in the previous review, I don't want to get too bogged down in the numbers uh, moving forward with reviews. I want to have it there. I want to collect the data on GC2 and I want you to be able to see and analyse the data for some of those who want it. But I want to give much more of a, an immediate opinion, an immediate response to how I react and how I feel about these golf clubs once I've hit a few balls. So that's exactly what we're going to do. First ball in. A bit of shape on that. Not a bad start. Not a super strike. We're going to be using again. Um, we'll dry some of these off maybe, but we're going to be using uh, it's it's TP5 golf balls and GC2 data. Better ball. Nice ball flight. Again, didn't mention earlier on, um, and I'll throw the specs up for you now, is the, um, the lofts. So I think it um, goes through to three iron, uh, from three iron up to wedges. Um, and I think this is seven iron is 32 degrees, as you can see. So like I said, slightly stronger than traditional. Best strike out the three. But you can pick that up on the sound at all. Good ball flight. A few have mentioned and uh, something that I will get sorted. There's an issue with GC2 for me in terms of the software that I have to be able to show you the ball flights, the balls that I'm hitting out there into a sort of um, into a 3D driving range environment. And I've struggled with that for quite some time. I hope to get it resolved. 
but for the time being this is how the reviews will have to continue i'm afraid but people have made comments about it and i know you prefer to see the ball flight next one in pretty much all similar in terms of uh, line varying degree of quality of strike and again that's very much what this channel is all about it's very average a little off the bottom there so i'm going to continue hitting some golf balls and i will get some more data um, to analyze this in full first thing i would say is that for me personally at the level i play at i'd probably be even at this stage been a little bit more swayed towards the um the 585s and the reason is let's hit one more the reason i would say that is because for me visually the 585s are only slightly slightly bigger from that top line appearance because you don't see anything else when this club is sat behind the golf ball the only noticeable difference that I can see between a 585 and this is the, the bulk on the top line. Now, when you bear in mind that for me, purely on the mass in the club, purely in the what I expect to be forgiveness wise, and what I've found certainly, I've hit some balls off camera obviously before I've just hit, gone straight into the testing. There's plenty more forgiveness, there's a bigger sweet spot if you like, whatever you want to, whatever your terminology you like to use. There is more forgiveness packed into the 585s than there is to the 785. And like I said, for some people, they find the center of this golf club, they'll find this absolutely pure because the feeling out of it is very, very good indeed. The problem is, is that for average golfers, it's how many times we're gonna find that sweet spot in the 785 as opposed to maybe that bigger sweet spot in the 585. And for me, straight away, like I said, in giving you some immediate feedback on what I think, I'd be more drawn towards the 585 simply because i can't see the logic in why i would go down the route of this slightly smaller more compact head i don't see the need i don't see the need because it's very very minor we're probably talking i don't know the exact dimensions but it's literally just a few millimeters difference in the width of the top line that is all i can see in terms of the difference why you would go down that route and make life any more difficult i'm not quite so sure a little bit of a fat one just to finish there but it's still gone out there to be fair the clubs i mean it's performing really well i don't think for me like i said it's given me enough help and assistance that i was getting from the 585 i suppose you know this isn't a head-to-head -head, but i literally have just come back off the on the back of hitting the 585 so it's hard not to do that mental comparison very good club uh, i won't do the analysis just yet i'll hit some more golf balls but it's a good club it's got plenty of uh, lovely feel about it but it needs some consistent ball striking and this is a typical example of where an average golfer like me just isn't quite getting that consistency uh, at the moment i'll play a few more balls and then uh, oh i finish this off with an absolute beauty and that's what i was just referring to when you hit a ball like that and that's probably the first one i have hit absolutely pure and solid out the five whatever i've hit so far then that feels absolutely amazing but that's one in five for me and i just think i was maybe i'll get that just little better percentage of performance in that five eight five eight five but like you're saying this isn't a head-to-head -head, so i shouldn't do it let's go and have some numbers from gc2 Right, so I said I was going to keep the data element of this review brief, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. But here's the numbers up on screen for you now, and we will go through them together. Right, ball speeds across quite a decent cross-section of shots here. 110 on average, but again, if you look through the numbers, very consistent. Launched very high, this one, 32 degrees of loft, but launched extremely high on average at 22.3, but consistently high. It was the same, it wasn't a variable. 4.8 uh, spin, again, slightly higher than what I experienced with a 5.8 fives but and again I mentioned that if you do watch my videos at the moment the spin number that I'm achieving seems to be dropping off the charts at the moment which is a bit of an odd one um, but take that for what it is uh, 33 degrees in terms of peak height 158 carry now then first of all uh, numbers what do I think of them well I've 
but exactly where I was expecting them to be. I would hope for a better uh, spin number. You'd all want to see a better spin number. I've still always got this debate that whenever I've took a golf club, a seven iron out on the golf course, I've never ever had a problem problem in getting a ball to stop on a green and it baffles me but that's what the spin number says and that's supposedly low but there you go take that what you will it launched probably slightly higher than i'd want it to um and like i said that was visible straight away uh, which was interesting uh, and as i say from the peak height they were quite a bit different one degree worth of difference between this and the 585 but both launch and peak height was quite a bit different really um, which surprised me a little bit 158 carry again bang on the button in terms of a seven iron uh, with that amount of loft on it if you, i'm going to throw my dispersion numbers up here because it's an interesting one for me because the dispersion is absolutely brilliant in terms of front to back left to right i hit the ball really really well even the balls where i said turn one over and leap one out right and a bit of variables thrown in there but that's what as i say you will always expect from me but the interesting thing was it was very very consistent it was very 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 tightly packed and again i think in summary fantastic feel great looking small and compact head like i said won't appeal to everybody it'll be a bit off-putting but seriously forgiving for this type of club and performance very very good indeed i think it's um the differences between this and the last set of irons, the differences the tweaks and the improvements will be minor it's hard to gauge uh, but the set of irons from two years ago were absolutely superb so like i said uh, any improvements on that is uh, is still a pretty damn decent set of irons and for me never understand it why but certainly in the uk at least strixon is not a huge huge seller in terms of irons and it really should be right up there because in everything that's in this bay it really does meet match up um in terms of performance in terms of spec in terms of standard the upcharge thing with the shafts and everything else that i mentioned it ticks loads of boxes all i was saying is when you go in and consider buying a new set of irons i would certainly try these frictions and give them a go do not dismiss them high high quality set of irons review over i'll see you soon